Welcome back to the Shop Mini RC, everybody. I'm Ken, and today we are looking at a FureTech drop in system. This is the starter setup. Basically, comes with a uh, Lizard Pro, a receiver, and the Venom motor. This is an Outrunner motor. It's a 3450 kV motor, 1212 size stator. And uh, yeah, this is a pretty sweet little kit. FureTech 2525. Should drop right into our red cat, making it brushless. We can even use our stock remote. So we don't have to get rid of this guy here if you don't want to. All right, let's go ahead and dive into it. Here's what comes in that package. Again, a little motor here. Motor screws. Our receiver that'll pair up to this guy as well as any just about any ready to run fly sky protocol so that includes the hobby plus the fms the scx 24 v2 the blue receiver all that stuff will pair to this guy which is pretty awesome even the fcx 10 11 channel transmitter uh, will pair to this mind you this is only four channels so you won't be able to use all those channels but you could pair it if you wanted to and pairing to these is so simple it's awesome you literally just hold the bind button on the remote on all of them turn on the remote turn on the truck power up the receiver and then it binds and worst case just reset the remote and you're bound there's some paperwork that comes with this is the uh specifically for the red cat talks about it both the starter and the torpedo version. There's a torpedo version. This thing absolutely rips, but I wanted to show the starter version because I think that's what a lot of people are gonna go over to because of its its price point. It's such a good price point. The starter system with the receiver to pair to your stock remote is just $99. Same price as the truck, but if you know brushless, brushless is always pricey to go to. So uh, this is a great drop in. Again, the receiver, the ESC Lizard Pro, as well as the Venom. Um, you can get it without the receiver if you want to use your own uh, transmitter and receiver. You can get just the motor and the ESC, and that setup is $89. But for $10 more, you get the receiver. They also have, for $149, the Torpedo, which is the motor, and the, um, it's the Cedar motor, as well as the Python Pro. And then there is the one that's got the transmitter as well, and that's another $10. Uh, so you can use your transmitter. It comes with the receiver. Here is the Lizard Pro instructions. Bam, if you want to pause and look. And there's the back, basically how to calibrate and set up your uh, your Bluetooth. One of the coolest things about these guys is the Bluetooth capability and tuning. You can just download an app on your phone and tune it all there. Tons of stuff here. Your power curve, your punch, your FOC, everything. Also, just some specs on this uh, Lizard Pro. It is 2S and 3S capable. It's got a 6.5 volt, 2.5 amp BEC, so it helps with the servo, uh, getting you know extra power to your servo. If you are trying to run an 8.4 volt uh, servo, you will either have to run uh, like a BEC to your servo and skip your, it's a lot of work basically, or you can pick up the Python Pro and the Python Pro is like five amps and it goes up to 8.4 volts. So uh, there's your constant current, burst current, and uh, the power switch is a physical power switch, which I tend to like because I like to just leave it on. That way, just plugging plugging the uh, battery in will be my power switch. I don't really use the power switch on the ESCs. Plus, you know, on other ESCs I've had them break, or if they're like the push button where you push and hold or things like that, they break a lot. And then the ESCs toast. Whereas with these, you just leave them on. You don't mess with the switch. You don't have to worry about it breaking. All right. Let's get to our red cat here. Here's our red cat just to kind of show you. We've made some mods. We have a video over here just kind of showing some of the mods and stuff. Also the deep dive review on this guy. So if you don't have one or if you just want to see some tips and tricks I show in that video, that's up in the corner. And then we've got this uh, three flow nine servo on here. This is the torrent. It is awesome. Video over here on that. And then our links. These are 828RC, Tyler Chapman links. And we have a video on that as well. And that'll be over there. So definitely check those out after this video. Open them up in a new tab or something. And uh, yeah, you can watch them after this. All right, so getting this motor into here should be fairly easy. We're just gonna go ahead and pull out our transmission. It's gonna be these four bolts here. There's a 1.5 millimeter driver. Got all four screws out, and this guy should just be able to pop right out. Just know your drive shafts are gonna drop out. Okay. We did shorten up our motor wires on this just to make it super clean. Um, but we're not going to be using that motor anymore. So there we go. We're also going to pull off this receiver here. ESC receiver combo. So let's get that out of here. 
There's our truck. Now to get this motor out, we are going to have to pull off this drive shaft. And that guy uses a Phillips. Okay. And then these four screws on the transmission housing. Oh, we do have to pull both drive shafts off. I forgot about that. So in this guy, you do have to pull all the gears out to be able to get to the motor, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Another thing, this transmission is very similar to a TRX-4M, and you are actually able to, and a lot of people already did this, where they took their TRX-4M for tech motors, whether it's the the Venom or a mini Komodo, well, micro Komodo usually, mini Komodo is a little, little big, but the micro Komodo or uh, the Cedar, and they're able to throw them in here with the TRX-4M uh, pinion on there. The pinion that comes on here is a 12 tooth pinion. So uh, the Red Cat here, this pinion is a 12 tooth pinion and it's steel, but uh, the TRX-4M is an 11 tooth pinion. So you do have the option, if you wanted to, you could just pick up the TRX-4M set, this exact same set here, and be able to drop it in. You will still need this receiver if you're trying to use your stock remote, but at least the motor, whether it's a Cedar, Micro Komodo, or the Venom, uh, but you can use the 11 tooth pinion for that, and that'll give you a little bit of gear reduction here and get you actually a little bit more torque, which is pretty awesome. You will have to do some modifications though to the, uh, slots where your motor is because you have to be able to mesh your motor down and so you have to slot out the, the holes and uh, slide the motor down just ever so slightly to get a good mesh now we're going to take these out and just watch as i take them out you can always go back and re-watch the video uh, just to know the order things go in it's pretty simple Okay, and then we just have our two screws down in here for the motor. And our motor will pull right out. There it is. Okay. Then you can throw this guy in there. Try to think about which way you want your wires coming out. Let's see, we actually have to mount it this way. because There's two wider and two more narrow mounts. This uses the wider mounts yeah and then i guess we'll use their screws are they shorter i'm not sure let me check because you want to make sure you don't put too long of screws into a motor because if you do and the screw goes through your mount it could actually push into here and damage it or cause it to rub so i'm thinking we're going to use these guys instead they are slightly shorter yeah We'll use those screws that came with. They should be should be plenty there. Now, if you want to, you can lock tight this because you are going into metal. But just be aware if you get lock tight on your transmission housing, you could break down and degrade that hole. So we're not actually going to lock tight it. We're just going to snug it up real nice. And we should be golden there. So those holes are the slots or the holes you'll have to basically just drill out and make them a little bit slotted so that you could slide your pinion down and to engage your gear if you go with an 11 tooth. We're going to go with the 12 just because that's the, the set they're offering and then we can show you and then maybe, I don't know, maybe later we'll drop it down to an 11 tooth or if we put a different system in or if we get another truck we do a second uh, brushless system maybe we'll do an 11 tooth just to get the comparison there and see how much more torque and how much wheel speed we lose. Because if you're going to gain torque by gearing down, you're going to lose wheel speed. So just keep that in mind as well. All right. So there should be no need to mesh this at all. The meshing should just work. But you can always check and make sure nothing feels too tight or crazy. And you can see in there, we got a, I'm holding the gear. We've got a little bit of play in there. Just a tiny bit. So it should be good. Gears drop right back in like so. 
and we should be golden here. We're going to get our casing back on, and then I'm going to plug in the motor to the ESCN receiver before I install it, just to check and make sure everything seems like it's running fine. The last thing you want to do is have everything installed and then something's wrong and you got to take it all back apart. So I always like to recommend that people check things along the way as you're doing your installations and upgrades, always just kind of check each, each step. So like I said, we'll get this guy back together and then we'll plug it all in and power it up. Alrighty. Let me go ahead and plug this guy into channel two here. Yellow cable in, that's your signal. Uh, they do have different plugs for this, so if you're running a different battery, you can get a different adapter that plugs into your ESC. This is a standard SCX24 type adapter or plug, but they do make them for the TRX4M and a couple others. You can just plug it in there and run, but the Red Cat does run on this. Let's go ahead and get our transmitter here. We're going to turn it on and put it into bind. Hold the bind button, turn it on. You should be flashing, and we can plug this guy in. Plug this guy in and turn it on. Okay. Now it didn't appear to bind, we're still flashing, but I think if we just turn it off and turn it back on, we get bound up. There we go, guys. Ooh, buddy. That's going to be awesome. Feels nice and smooth in there. Oh, I love that. All right, great. So let's go ahead and get it installed now. All right, so I just noticed that our wires coming out of the bottom of the motor here, they're kind of, uh, they're sitting right on our link. See that? So if I go down in there, it's sitting right on the link and I don't want to have to put a bunch of bending on this and just when the link's moving and wear and tear and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this guy back up. I'm going to flip it to the other side and it's going to come out the top here. So it'll come out the top, but at least we'll, we'll have clearance and uh, our battery normally is on this side, so we are going to mount our electronics where our other electronics were mounted over here. So I'd rather have the motor wire on that side versus having to like bring it around or put our electronics over here. We usually just use this as our battery mount. Uh, we use a smaller battery typically. But uh, yeah, so let me flip this around and we'll be back. And I just want to point out while you're in there putting your motor in, if you don't have a lot of grease in your transmission gears, Definitely a good time to grease it up, or if you like to go through water, although if you're going through water with this, it's probably a bad idea. Um, but definitely while you're in there, you should grease up your transmission gears, or if you're going to go to metal transmission gears, now's a good time to swap that over as well. So um, just keep that in mind. That way you're saving a little bit of time and effort in taking things apart and putting it back together. Might as well do it all at once while you're in there. There we go. It's going to give us a lot better clearance with our wires we don't have to worry about them bending and getting hit on things and eventually breaking on us and again because we took it apart we're going to get back in there and we're going to double check make sure everything still feels smooth because something might have happened while we were in there it's pretty simple highly unlikely but i just like to always double check Yeah, mesh feels good. All right. Now we'll get her installed. All right, we got our front and rear drive shafts back installed. And I just want to show you what phasing is real quick. Uh, when we go to install our transmission back in or your drive shafts in, either way, you want to make sure that your drive shafts are phased. Okay. And that means basically your screw on your output shafts, make sure they're facing the same direction or the ears on the shafts, right? So if you look at the rear here, Go ahead and get this lined up. When you get your drive shaft in like this, you can see that our screws are facing the same direction. And that also means that the ears on the actual drive shaft itself are facing the same direction, right? You don't want it going opposite that, like this, where your ear is now on this side and then on your shaft side, it's on this side, it's facing up. That, that'll cause vibration and at extreme articulation, it could cause, um, some binding in the actual u-joint there so you just want to make sure they're facing the same direction it's not a huge deal on these smaller rigs but you can get vibration and whatnot at high speeds uh, but on larger trucks and cars especially on like high speed speed run type cars you definitely want to make sure they're in phase um, and it's just good habit to be in just make sure you whenever you install new drive shafts always make sure they're in phase
Transmission back in there nice and snug. Get our screws back in and then we will mount our electronics. There we go, nice and snug. Remember, you are going into plastic, so don't over tighten. You will strip things out. Usually when you go into plastic, you don't need to worry about being super, super tight. Just get it snug. The plastic will generally hold your screws in fairly well. If you're going metal into metal, so metal screw into metal transmission housing, you'll want to use some Loctite more than likely. Not too much. You don't want to get it on plastic. Loctite on plastic will completely, like I said, degrade the plastic. So you just got to be careful with that. Um, but metal into metal will vibrate out. So you, you definitely want to use some Loctite if you're going into a metal transmission housing there. But in plastic, you really don't need to over tighten at all. All right, we're going to go ahead and test this guy one more time now that we're back and installed, just because I like to make sure. Yeah. That's going to be awesome. Look at that slow crawl. Look at that. Ready? Boom. Oh, it's like not even barely there. Look at that. It's going to be sick. Sick, sick, sick. All right. So now we're just going to go ahead and get our electronics mounted. We've got to figure out the best way to do that. Let's see. If we run the motor wire this way, we can run this over here. And then the battery wire can come across. I think that's probably the best way to do it. Plus, the ESC is generally heavier than the uh, receiver. We could also decase our receiver. Also, lay it down. Let's see. Lay it like this. No, like this. Maybe we lay it like this. We lay it down like that. That seems good. All right. And then we can tidy up our wires. So we just use double-sided servo tape. We got some clear stuff. We got some red stuff. I believe we have this in the link down at the bottom. At the very bottom of all of our descriptions, we have a ton of links of just different stuff we use. I believe our sticky tape is in that list. Just pick it up on Amazon. We just want to be sure we're not too far forward that way we don't rub it on our wires or anything crazy like that. Uh, there's plenty of room, so. And this guy here can just mount right there. I do like to wrap our cables, make them a little bit more tight. You can always cut them down and re, uh, re pin them and stuff or re solder them to clean it up. But I think this does a pretty good job of shrinking down uh, wires being everywhere. You can see on our servo wire here, you know, not too bad. It's got a little loose because we've been pulling at it and stuff. But yeah, you just kind of wrap them around and then you can use some heat to uh, heat the wires and make sure they stay kind of how you intend. And then, like I said, once we're kind of nice and coiled, we'll just hit it with just a little bit of heat, not too much. It just kind of lets the uh, wire, the, the plastic on the wire sheath kind of loosen up and take a new shape here. When you do that, don't pull on the wire, the plug ends themselves, right? Just kind of pull only on the wire. You don't want to de-pin it or break the pins in there. So I don't really try to put any kind of pressure on the wire's uh, plug ends themselves at all. Yeah, there you go. Boom. Okay. Ta-da. Nice. We'll do the same thing with the motor wire here and we'll be good. Alrighty. Should be golden now. So we got a couple options. We got this little Tattoo 300. This is a 2S, uh, pretty good shape to work on this. We've also got uh, Palm Beach, Bots. These are, they're good batteries and they work. I don't know, I've had a couple with dead cells and they don't have the best customer service. So 
I don't know if I can really recommend those, um, but th they are nice because they make some really, really small ones. They're even smaller than this, like some 120 size. So if you're looking for that, they are an option. Just be aware you might have to go through, a, you know, another set of batteries faster and they're not going to replace it for you. The uh, Spectrum 3S is here. Those will work really well. There's also Hard Park, which we don't have any, but Hard Park makes a 3S and a 4S. Now, you can run this guy on 3S, 2S and 3S for the ESC, but the motor is recommended only to run 2S. So just keep that in mind. We have seen some people run them on 3Ss and they work and they last, but if you end up frying your uh, Venom motor on 3S, uh, that's on you. It's not, it's not labeled for 3S. Uh, if you want a 3S system, either go with the Cedar or the Mini Komodo or Micro Komodo, any of those. Uh, the Micro Komodo is basically the exact same as this, but it's 3S capable. It's a little bit different in how it's built, but it looks the same. Um, but we're going to go ahead and run this tattoo battery. We just kind of use these rubber bands to hold our battery in. It allows us to run different sizes and not have to Velcro them because different rigs need to have the battery in different spots. So when I we used to use Velcro, but then you can't use the same battery in another rig because it's got Velcro in a different spot. It's a mess. So go ahead and run this guy here. Uh oh. I wonder if our battery's dead. Let's try a battery we know is good. What happened? Hmm. I think it was because we uh, plugged it in before we turned on our transmitter. That was odd. So one thing you definitely want to do when you first install this guy is go into the app. So we're going to go into the app next. I'm going to show you how to calibrate your transmitter because that can also have issues uh, like you just saw where it kind of does weird stuff, cogs, or doesn't even go at all. Um, but yeah, always make sure you turn on your transmitter, then you turn on your truck. Okay, so we're in our Bluetooth app now. Make sure you always have the most recent app downloaded. Um, if you have an older app or you've used it before, always check to make sure there's an update. There can be weird stuff that happens if you don't have your app up to date. You can then go ahead and choose your rig. And now you can see we're... Got all that feedback, which is awesome. Um, First thing we're going to do is just check and make sure our firmware is all the way up to date. We are on 2.27, but there may be extras. I think I think that's it though. Yep, actually most recent firmware 2.27, fix volt cutoff. All right, so we are most recent update. If you're getting yours much later, you may want to, again, double check that. We're also on our Venom, which is good. If you have a different motor, you can change it here. Now I have a, a video that goes way deep into this. I'll put it over here. It shows everything. I'm just giving you the super basics right now. The first thing you want to do though, is you're going to want to go into throttle here and throttle is where you calibrate. See right there, it says we're at a negative three right now. That means our it doesn't know where center on our throttle is. So we're definitely going to want to set this up. So we've got our center, our forward and our reverse. Um, endpoints basically. Now when I do this, I always try to set it up on a, a stand or you can even just set it upside down as long as your wheels aren't touching. We'll just do that. It's easier. Doesn't have risk of falling either. Um, because if you do the calibration incorrectly, you can have some weird stuff happen. Uh, like you could have it go full throttle, stuff like that. So just make sure you're going to follow the instructions exactly and have your truck like this just in case you mess up. So do you want to start calibration? Yes. We're going to set zero speed, which is basically just making sure our transmitter is set to zero right in the center. Say OK. It's going to beep. And you're going to set your max speed, full throttle. It's going to beep twice. And then you're going to set your max brake or your reverse. They're the same thing depending on how you have your truck set up, but basically full reverse. And then you want to save. Yes. And now you can see our throttle is actually at zero. And when we give it just a tiny bit, it'll go back to zero or negative one, negative two. But generally, um, it's going to be right in there. You don't want it being like negative three, negative four, negative one, negative two, or one, two is usually fine. That just has to do with the quality of the trigger, right? So it basically is saying that this remote has a little bit of play in the trigger that's causing it to not have a true center, which isn't a big deal. Um, but usually you don't get throttled till around five or six percent. 
let's see, we got throttle right there. So actually 13%. And you can adjust that. That all has to do with how you're adjusted in your in your settings here, your throttle curve, um, all that kind of stuff. You can adjust that. Okay, but definitely calibrate your new ESC as soon as you get it. First things first, here's where you change your voltage output. Just make sure your servo can handle a higher voltage output. Also your low voltage cutoff. Um, depending on whether this is a, like a trail rig or a comp rig, we'll adjust that. Usually on a trail rig, we'll keep it right around 3.2. Uh, on a comp rig, we actually usually shut it off. There are issues when you're running a small battery that if you give it a lot of throttle, the smaller the battery, the more you'll have voltage drop when you give it throttle. So if you really punch it hard, um, your voltage in the battery could drop below the low voltage cutoff, which will cause your ESC to shut off or reset. And then you have to wait a second. And in the middle of a comp, that's not ideal. So we usually turn our voltage cutoff very low or off because we know we're running a battery, we charge it each run, stuff like that. So, but in a trail rig, you definitely want to make sure you've got like 3.2, 3.3, somewhere in there. If you notice your truck cuts off under full throttle, your battery is probably low or your low voltage cutoff is too low for uh, the size battery you have. And then you have forward reverse, forward reverse with brake and forward with brake, depending on the kind of running you do. Race cars and monster trucks, well, race cars usually don't have a reverse. They don't allow you to have reverse, so they have forward with brake only. Only, and then like monster trucks are going to want or bashers want forward reverse with brake that way you can throttle and then brake without it just going into reverse and breaking stuff and then crawlers forward reverse anyway ton of stuff in here um, if you notice your motor getting warm for any reason when it's not moving you probably have your drag brake set too high and uh, if you don't like how fast it goes in reverse you can turn it down here we'll probably put it down here around 70 just so we don't have quite as much punch in reverse Okay, simple as that. Let's run this guy. Now, before we actually hit the rocks, I just wanted to show you on our crawler tracks just how good a slow crawl you can get out of this thing. It's absolutely insane. You're going to have to be patient, though, because uh, it's slow. That was me. I was backing off to see how, see if I can get it slower. It's about as slow as we're going to get, though. But still, how nuts is that? And then you can just give it a little more if you want. Nice and smooth. Slow down. Speed up. Slow down. And then you still got good wheel speed. You ready for it? Pretty nuts, guys. Pretty nuts. Amazing. So good. If you haven't had a brushless system, oh man, you're missing out. Let's try the frame bender now. And I can go slower. Let's make for a real long video. And it'll just keep going. It's got all the torque in the world. It's just going to keep going. Wish you could see the backside. Hold on. I'm going to show you. Man. Just keep it going. I haven't moved my finger at all. Other than trying to slow down. Yeah. Super nutso, guys. All right, let's get on the rocks.
hope you guys enjoyed that. This little guy is awesome. Again, plenty of slow crawl. She's moving. Plenty of wheel speed. Yep, yep. Seems good. Definitely a blast. I think uh, brushless upgrade is one of the better upgrades you can do to a truck. Just from a throttle control standpoint and low end torque. It also you get better battery life, things like that. So, I mean, if you're looking for something to go brushless, this setup is definitely one of the better for the price. Um, it's awesome because if you do end up wanting to upgrade your motor later, the FuerTech Lizard Pro is kind of the standard. It's been around for a long time. It's proven. It's got plenty of power. So you can go to a Cedar motor. You can go to a Micro Komodo, a full-size Komodo, a Mini Komodo. Uh, you can go to all the other brands as well if you're interested in putting a different brand motor in there. But this ESC alone is like cream of the crop. It's one of the best. So definitely worth picking up. And it's also just awesome. It comes with the receiver for your remote. And again, if you've got the other trucks, the other FMS trucks or Hobby Plus trucks, the FuraTech FX 118, those other trucks all run with the same protocol. Even the SCX24 V2, that's the same looking remote. They'll all bind to this. So if you end up moving things around, swapping things around, you'll always have an extra receiver, which is freaking sweet, especially if you have a V2, ES, uh, V2 ESC on a SCX24. But anyway, I just wanted to show you guys this, show you how easy it was to install and what a good value it is. Definitely check out the other videos on the rig, the links, the uh, the servo here from 3Flow9. You got some RC all-wheel drives here. We also have a video on those. So definitely worth checking out. Make sure you like and subscribe if you enjoy the channel, enjoy the content. That like and that subscribe really help. It's just a click for you, but it means the world to us. Then you've also got the notification bell. And of course, if somebody else is trying to figure out this stuff, make sure you share it with them, guys. That's really what this community is about. It's about educating people, helping people when they need help, sharing content that is relevant to somebody um, that needs, needs a little help or is looking for information on stuff. Again, I really appreciate it. Huge shout out to all the channel members out there. We've got channel members and they get to see the video before anybody else with no ads. They also get some exclusive content and priority replies and some other stuff. So definitely check out the channel memberships if you're interested in channel memberships. And then we've got swag too. You can check out our swag right over here. Um, yeah, don't have much else to say. Hopefully you guys are able to check out this starter setup or the Cedar Pro version with the Python Pro, the Cedar with the Python Pro um, for your Red Cat SA18. Tons of cool stuff coming up for these little trucks. These trucks are an amazing value. 100 bucks for the truck. Um, you can't find that in any other ready to run. Pretty amazing. And then again, this is a really good upgrade for it. It's cheaper than a lot of the other Fear Tech stuff. Well, all the other Fear Tech stuff. And again, give you keep your, uh, your transmitter. Pretty awesome. All right, guys, get out there, build something awesome, build a car, build a course, build a community to run them with, and then smash it, crash it, and bash it. But don't break the expensive parts. Peace. Mm -hmm.